but we're back on the little errands 922022. I want to fix that drive. It was working pretty good, but not right. It would skip a little bit and then just it wouldn't move. So I was wondering what was going on. And it seems like, hopefully, you can see these top two little pulleys here. They're pretty gunked up, and there was oil on them from the slopping oil around and stuff like that. So they, they were slipping. Uh, so I cleaned up that, the idler pulley down here, and the pulley down in the bottom down there. I'm going to put the, um, the belts back on and see if we get a little more traction out of it. Okay, those are pretty clean. They're kind of pitted and stuff like that, but you can see on brand new belts that it's already worn them a bit. From the, just from the, the rusty crap buildup. So now i got to thread these down there, if you can see the double pulley down there. And I've done it before, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but we'll see what we get. I clean that down there too. Alright, the belts are still slipping around this pulley. I'm not quite sure what to do because that spring-loaded tensioner down there doesn't seem to have any adjustment on it. And I don't know, the belt's wrong. They're too long. The right part number, they're brand new. Don't know. Problem is, the new belts I bought are too big. They're just slipping. What a pain in the ass, huh? Okay, today we got my little Toro Snowmaster 20. I use this thing to uh, do the deck. I got a big deck. It goes around the other side of the house, too, so it's lightweight. And this thing just kicked ass last year. I bought two of them for 20 bucks. Kind of put the two together and made one. And uh, we'll see if we can get this thing started. Let's put some gas in it. This thing's a two stroke. And it's got a primer. Things like it's priming. Oh, it's got a little choke. Makita on. Let's see what happens. in the carburetor. I didn't really think this thing was even going to work last year, but it started almost on the first or second pull in the middle of snowstorms and five degree weather. But once you get it going, all it took. Here's another one I've had for a while and I've used. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get this one started. And um, I don't think I've run it for like over a year. And we might as well sell this one. I, mean, I seem to always pick up a new one to work on. So let's see if we can get this running. To put a little gas in it, haven't pulled it or anything. It's a sort of cold start. Choke on, gas up, oh, a little problem there, okay, 
Turn off the throttle, it opens the choke. That's not good. I have to rebend that. got no spark on this one so it means it's got to come apart unless there's a kill switch someplace I can't recall but I think I might bring this one in the basement since it's nice and small okay and here's a 10m60 I think it was our 710m it says there that might be different for the tractor front I had four of these before I picked up all the other ones it ran and I used, and I just couldn't bring myself to sell them because I thought they were so cool. But now I think I should probably sell them off if I can. So this has been sitting for maybe a year or so. We'll see if we can get this one started. D runs good, the drive works, the blower works. Just want to make sure that uh, it's greased up, there's oil in there. Uh, I'd like to get it to idle a little bit lower. It seems like it only gets so low and then it, it shuts off. So there's, I gotta lower the, uh, the idle screw a little bit if I can. my stash of parts a cover for the electric start since I don't have one for this machine. It would be nice if I did, but I don't. I cleaned it up a bit. Uh, the only thing I'm unhappy with is what I call a lazy pull start. Now, sometimes, you know, it doesn't recoil all the way in. You get like this much hanging out for no reason whatsoever because it feels nice and tight might be a selling point you know I'd like to fix that but my guess is I've already looked at it in the past so I think I might put it up for sale just the way it is oh nice old 10 m60 well it's kind of on my victory lap with this thing doing a demo on my Craigslist ad and the linkage kind of screwed up I had to adjust <coughs> the governor here so that I get a little more throttle out of it and uh, it's a little bit tricky, but I think I got it going good. And then I kind of noticed that the, this little thing right here, little springy poo, it's kind of gone on this one. So the throttle kind of like, you know, it's kind of like half there. So I'd kind of like to replace that out of this one. I've never done that before, so we'll see what that's like. So I pulled out the choke so that I could spin this thing out and it doesn't seem to be really moving. I'm not quite sure how it's in there. I would think it would kind of screw in. And I feel like I got an angle of trying to get it out. Now this one I kind of wiggled around a little more, pushed it this way and that way. And it's better. But it's not great. 
Okay, I came up with this idea to take a brad, put it down inside there. I'm not going to push it all the way in. Let's see if it stiffens it up a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. Not too much though. Well, actually. That's not bad. I'm gonna tap it in there and see what happens. Okay, I'm back to the other 922022. Um, before I said it had no spark, I forgot it has something called an interlock lever. This is kind of a safety feature that you have to have on in order to start it. And it's kind of strange because the other machine doesn't work like this, but that needs to be pulled in in order to start the engine. So, I just got a sputter out of it, but I haven't gotten it to start, so you're going to see the cold start. points but I gotta figure out that interlock switch and really how it works because it's kind of weird to have to hold it on the whole time but everything seems to work that's good yeah, I'm gonna go in for the day it's, it's pretty cold it's like 35 and really windy so I get kind of frustrated quick but I think uh, we're in good shape tomorrow's supposed to be warmer so we'll hit it then well, the ducks are hanging out at my place for some reason lately there's like 40 in my yard the other day. Got the dock in. Boats put away for the winter. Plastic owl. Okay, today we have a warmish day. It's almost like 50 degrees. So I figured I'd get off that, uh, that paint that was just blistering and peeling off and just spray some uh, black paint on it. 97 cent. Walmart paint, which actually seems to be pretty good paint. Just hit it with a uh, scraper and the wire brush, and now I'm going to hit it with some mineral spirits. I know it's, the rust isn't all gone, but it's just a patch. It isn't a renovation, it's just a patch job. Yeah, first coat on. Gloss on this coat. I've also bought a flat so I can kind of blend it in so it looks a little bit older. And yeah, it ain't pretty, but it's going to keep it from rusting. I'm also trying to maintain the integrity of the logo there. Um, yeah. Showroom. Okay, while well, we've got the paint drying over there for the first coat, this throttle is now working smoothly. I'm going to try to get some, <clears throat> as you see, I've greased it all up and stuff, but I want to try to get some mystery oil down the shaft. Drop at a time. Now I was thinking that this should be kind of permeable to the oil because it's, it's like a um, cable without the plastic wrapping on it. 
uh, but it didn't really seem to penetrate very well. So I'm going to do this for a while. This seems kind of futile, but I've got to loosen it up somehow. It's actually moving pretty well. I'm not quite sure what the problem is. I don't think it's the throttle because that moves so easy. It's kind of like the angle, but I'm still getting some oil down there. And I put in some light oil and now some thicker oil, so hopefully it'll make its way down and free itself up. Now back over to the paint job. Uh, I'm going to let that dry a little bit because it's not that warm out. I got an orange. I got um, Rust-Oleum. call it Bright Gloss Real Orange. And I'm going to see how much of a match this is. Somebody said Gloss Orange, but they didn't have it. Um, so I've also used uh, Chevy Engine Red, Chevy Engine Orange, which is actually a really good match, but that paint is more expensive. So I'm going to try this out just for the heck of it. Uh, that's as far as we got with this experiment. <laughs> now, here's another trick I learned from 65 Ford. And that's that if you use gas on a rag, you can wipe that uh, paint right off. Not sure if it works when it's fully dry, but when it was just sprayed, it comes right off. Clean the logo up too. I hit everything with a flat just a little bit, just to take it down a notch. I think it looks decent, at least it's not all rusted. That's pretty smooth. So I put the cover on and bolt everything down and then it <laughs> freezes up again. I think that'll be good. 10M6D, um, we got the throttle all set up. I want to take a look inside here. I know that I've been in here because I made this bottom plate for it. So, but everything looks pretty clean in here. Boy, a little too clean. Well, not too clean. But it's all working well, so why screw with it, right? Correct. I'm going to put the cover back on. It's a go. This is about the only thing on the 10M60 that I don't like. And that was this joint here. This is kind of a ball joint. And this fell out of there. I put it back together and I hammered over. You can't really see, but in there. I hammered over where the ball socket is so that it was tighter. I think it would hold up. I really do. I mean, but this is a safety wire to kind of hold it in place. If I go to sell it, someone's going to go like, what's that wire on there? You know, and a new one of those ball joint things right there is like 26 bucks. So I'm not spending that on it. I mean, you could go without and make, you know, I don't know, something without the ball. I don't even know why it's really necessary. It's kind of overkill in the design. Okay, you can see the ball on this side. You can see where I kind of tapped it over with a screwdriver or a chisel to tighten up the socket. I think it's good. 